There's a fear that one day AI and robots will take all of our jobs. Self-driving cars will most likely put truck drivers out of work. Models like Dolly may soon put digital artists out of work. And now the robots are coming for Noah J's job because for the past few months, I have been working on a bit of AI that will hopefully learn to play zombies and eventually put people like Noah J out of business. Who needs zombie YouTubers to play zombies for us when we can just get bots to do it? It all starts with this. What you're looking at is my second iteration of my zombies object detection model. I trained an image detection model known as YOLO, you only look once to detect objects in zombies. Specifically zombies, the mystery box, jug, speed cola, quick revive, double tap, and mule kick. So live gameplay, which is being fed into OBS, is then turned into a virtual webcam feed. A Python script then looks for that webcam. Once it's found it, it uses the model I trained to look for zombies objects on that webcam feed and its findings are shown on the feed. To make this all possible, I spent several hours labeling by hand various objects within zombies. I had to sit there for hours on end drawing bounding boxes. My initial dataset consisted of around 400 images labeled by hand, but I've eventually grown my dataset to around 800 images. Once I had all of the images labeled by hand, we were ready to train, and to train them I used the YOLO V5 model. YOLO, you only look once, is a convolutional neural network which excels at classifying objects really quickly. It was perfect for being able to detect custom objects in zombies. The first model took about one day to train and the results were okay, like it can occasionally pick up on zombies and it finds quick revive pretty well. I guess you could say it technically works. It did fine as a proof of concept, but it is far from perfect. For starters, the frame rate and the delay are pretty bad. Now this isn't the fault of the model or Python, this is just the limitations of my hardware. Between running Black Ops, generating a virtual webcam, streaming that webcam to OpenCV, and then running the model on the feed, there's a lot happening at once. If you want to help the frame rate though, and help me get a better PC, the best way you can do that is by picking up some merch, either the Pack a Punch hat or the Perkaholics Anonymous sweatshirt, the only merch in the game that lets you rock Perkaholics on your sleeve. Either way, every piece of merch you buy will go towards helping me get a better PC, improve my frame rate, and ultimately put people like Noah J out of work. So pick up some merch, johnnyj25.com. Until then though, ignore the frame rate. This is just a proof of concept, if anything. Merch plugs and frame rates aside, the real problem with my zombies object detection model, believe it or not, is actually object detection. Odin, son! You had one job. Just the one. It's not perfect. Actually, it's not perfect might be an understatement. I noticed immediately when I was playing, I went to the back of the spawn, I looked out the window and boom, it told me this was mule kick. You idiot. That is not mule kick. That is a swastika. So yeah, that's a problem I gotta work out. I also notice everything is quick revive, like literally everything. This fucking wall is quick revive. This poster is quick revive. The missing box is quick revive. Double tap is quick revive. So yeah, the first version of the model is bad and everything's quick revive. It struggles to pick up zombies. It will label random objects. It's honestly really struggling to even pick up objects I wanted to recognize like Juggernaut. If I'm being honest though, I wasn't surprised at all. In fact, I trained it on a small sample size and I only had about eight images in each epoch of training. For the second version of my model though, I knew I was gonna step things up. We doubled the size of the number of images used in training, we doubled the size of each epoch, and we also included objects at different resolutions in our training set. With all of that in order and twice as many images used in training, I fired up the training and I realized immediately this is gonna take a long ass time. Two days later. So two days later and the training was complete. I was delighted with the results. I fired up zombies, walked to the back of the spawn, looked through the window and boom, it did not recognize a swastika as mule kick. Thank fucking God. Otherwise I could have been canceled really quick. It also did a much better job at picking out zombies and it was picking up other objects like the perk machines and the mystery box. Again, it's still not perfect. We went from the game of everything is quick revive and now we're playing the game most things are mule kick. Also, it still struggles at picking up Juggernog. I'm not sure why. This is an improvement though. Model version two is a step up from model version one and I could see this getting better as we continue to add more data to our training sets. 
It's recommended for the YOLO V5 model that when you're training, you use around 1500 images per class. We were using a little over 100 images per class, so bear with me, it's gonna take time. I estimate that for all of the classes we wanna classify, we're gonna need about 1,500 images in order to really get this model humming. Labeling over 10,000 images is gonna take a long ass time though, so bear with me. As a proof of concept, I'm satisfied. Mission accomplished. So now we have a model that's able to detect objects and zombies, but how do we use this model to be able to put someone like Noah J straight to the unemployment line? The key is to take the information that the model pulls out of the image and then turn that back into actionable data. This will be the next step in the project and it works a little like this. The AI agent would understand the layout of the map and where it is on that map. This could be represented using, say, a two-dimensional mini-map. It would then look to see which objects are in front of it. Then, using where the objects are in relation to our field of view and the size of each object, we could do a little bit of math to determine roughly where they are in our mini-map. Now we have a two-dimensional representation of our 3D scene generated using the results of our zombies object detection model. This mini-map would then be updated for each frame and situation that the AI finds itself in. The whole purpose of this is to take this complicated three-dimensional scene and then pull out different features of it that we find important. Then we change that data and represent in a way that an AI agent can actually make actionable decisions on what to do next. This though is where things get a little complicated. In fact, students from Carnegie Mellon wrote a whole paper on this and used very similar methods to teach an AI agent to play Doom. This was actually the inspiration for the project, and the hope is that over the coming months we can build out this system and create an AI agent that follows very similar techniques to the one used by the students at Carnegie to play zombies and maybe one day take Noah J's job. So if you want to support this project, consider donating to the Put Noah J Out of Business Foundation. Every piece of merch you buy, whether it's a Pack-A-Punch hat or a Perkaholics anonymous sweatshirt, will go towards putting people like Noah J, Mr. T. Lexify, and the likes out of business. Help our AI overlords take over, and more importantly, help support me and my future projects. I'd greatly appreciate it. Pick up some merch, johnnyj25.com. That's the project. Our next step right now is to improve our zombies object detection model. I'm gonna do this in two ways. One, by increasing the size of our data. It's gonna take me a while to get 10,000 images, but I'm also reconsidering how we detect zombies on screen. Right now, we're just using the whole body of the zombie, but I'm considering just using the eyes because that's the most important and most standout feature of the zombies. I noticed this when I was putting bounding boxes I had a hard time picking them out of hordes, but I had a really easy time picking out zombies' eyes from hordes. So if I'm having a hard time doing it, I'm sure my model will too. That's why I want to simplify the process. Regardless, once I have a better object detection model, my plan is to use that data to create a real-time two-dimensional mini-map. That way we can take what's going on in screen and put that into actionable information. Once we have that, we can really dive deep into other machine learning concepts that are referenced in the paper I mentioned earlier and teach our AI agent what to do in each frame of gameplay. This is an incredibly ambitious project, but I'm excited for the challenge. It's gonna take me a while to get there, but I can't wait to see what this is like in the end. I'll keep you guys updated and stay tuned.